Hi, this is Vicki Robinson. Today I've got some tips for you on customizing the Photoshop Elements workspace. You know, I've been working with Elements uh, since version 2, I think, and up until version 11, you had very little control over what your workspace looked like. Starting with 11, though, not only did they change the look and feel of Elements to make it look a little bit more like the full version of Photoshop, uh, but they also gave you some more uh, features in the ability to customize your workspace. So I'd like to show you that today. I recorded this in PSE 11, um, but the steps are all the same in any version of 11 up through the current version, which is now 14. So let's get started. Now, when you launch Elements for the first time, you'll see the welcome screen. The welcome screen lets you choose if you want to go into the organizer, which is where you can store and organize your photos and your scrapbooking supplies if you'd like, or it lets you go into the editor. Now, I'm not using the organizer, and this class isn't about the organizer, and I much prefer when I launch Elements to go directly into the photo editor. So that's a setting we can easily change to bypass this welcome screen in the future. To do that, click on the gear in the upper right hand corner, and when the dialog box opens, you want to choose to always start in the photo editor. Obviously you can also choose to start in the organizer if you'd like to do that or you can just leave it at the welcome screen if you prefer to do that as well. I'm going to set it to photo editor and click done and then close this dialog box. The next time I open elements it'll launch directly into my editor. Now if for some reason you'd like to get that welcome screen back that's easy to do. Just go to the help menu and choose welcome screen. And there you go. Now if you're upgrading from a previous version of Elements, opening Elements 11 for the first time can be a shock. The first thing you'll notice is the color of the screen, the application itself. It's this light gray color. Adobe's gone back and forth between a dark color, a light color, and they've changed the interface completely. It appears they're trying to make Elements look and feel a little bit more like the full version of Photoshop CS. But don't be intimidated by that. The colors may be different, the screens may be different, it may look different to you, but all the goodness and the magic that we've always been able to do in Elements with such ease is still there. Now let's take a closer look at the Elements interface. I've opened up Elements, it's maximized to full screen, and I've got a 21 inch monitor, so Elements is taking up the entire screen for me right now. This should be pretty much the same whether you're on Windows or on a Mac. However, let me just show you here that I can grab the little corner of this application frame, as it's called, and I can resize this window pretty much to anything that I want to do. I can separate here this little black bar, grab it, and I can move it around on my desktop. And one thing you'll notice it's different on a Mac than on a PC is that the Elements menu bar on a Mac is stuck to the top of the screen. On a Windows machine, that menu bar will be stuck up above here and when you move your window around, you'll be moving them together. It's independent on a Mac and there's nothing I can do to change that in Elements. Let me just maximize my screen again before we continue. Now when you launch Elements for the first time, it's going to bring you into quick mode. We'll be talking about quick mode and guided mode in later classes. Where we really want to be though is in the expert mode. Expert mode is where the, all the magic happens for scrapbookers and our journalers. So once you click on expert mode, Elements will remember that the next time you come in. You won't have to select it again from the menu. Across the top of the screen if you're on a Mac or at the top of your window if you're on a PC, you'll see the menu bar. And to help me a little bit as we navigate through this interface, let me just go ahead and open up a new document right now. You do that in a couple of ways. One of your options is to click on Open and choose a blank file. You can also go to the File menu and choose File, New, 
blank file. And yet the third way that you can open a new document is by using a keyboard shortcut. If there's a shortcut available for the task you want to complete, it'll show right to the right of the menu option, uh, the menu item. And in this case, opening a new blank file is a command N, or if you're on a PC, control N, and that's what we want to do, so we want to choose that. You'll get a dialog box that asks you what kind of document that you want to open. And Adobe got smart several years ago and they created a preset for scrapbookers that automatically opens a document in a 12 by 12 size. You can get to that preset by clicking on the drop arrow here and choosing scrapbooking. As you see it says 12 by 12, RGB color, a white background at 300 ppi. And we're going to go ahead and say OK. The area where the document opened up is called the workspace, and to its left is the toolbar. In older versions of Elements, the toolbar was one narrow strip of tools, but now Adobe has broken them into what it considers to be logical functional groups. You'll see viewing tools, selection enhancement, drawing tools, modification tools such as the crop tool and the color picker. We'll be going into each of these in more detail in another class, but for now just know that all the tools you're used to are there, and Adobe's just broken them up into groups. Below the workspace is the photo bin, and the photo bin will contain thumbnails of any open documents that you have, including any elements or papers, scrapbooking elements or papers that you've opened up. Now one thing to notice about the photo bin is that it shares space with toolbar options. So for instance, if we were to choose, say, the text tool, notice that the photo bin has disappeared and now we have options that are specific to the tool that we've chosen. We can get the photo bin back just by clicking on it. Now this photo bin icon along with the tool options and some other icons here are all part of what Adobe is calling the taskbar. On the far right side of the taskbar, you'll see icons representing some of the various panels that you can open up in the panel bin. Let's click on the layers panel so you can see what I mean. The layers panel opens up in the panel bin on the right side of the screen. In earlier versions of Elements, the layers panel and the effects panel icons were located somewhere at the top of your top right of your screen. And it's worthwhile to know that Adobe has flip-flopped between having the new layer icon and the adjustment layer icon, these icons here, at the top of the layers panel and then at the bottom of the layers panel and now they're back up at the top. The only one I've had trouble adjusting to really is the trash can icon which is almost always at the bottom of the layers panel. So just be aware of that if you are switching from an older version. Elements 11 also gives you a little bit more flexibility about how your workspace is arranged. In previous versions of Elements, you had no choice but to work with the panels where they were located. They were fixed on the screen. But now, if we come to this More icon and click on the down arrow, we can choose Customize Workspace. What you'll notice immediately is that the effects and graphics icons that were previously on the taskbar down here are now up and grouped with the layers panel. Here's the effects, the graphics, and the favorites. Now I don't happen to work with the graphics panel at all. These are some free clip art and things that Adobe provides to you. So if you don't use them either, you can go ahead and close that by right mouse clicking and saying close and the same thing with the favorites. I don't mark any of their graphics or the styles as favorites, although you certainly could if you wanted to, but since I don't use it, I'm just going to go ahead and close that as well. Now one of the neat things you can do is you can actually slide these panels around. So if I click on the effects, I can slide it over here and switch the position of these panels, and I can also, and here's the best thing yet, can actually drag the panel out your workspace and make it as large or as small as you need it to be. You know, you have some limitations on how narrow it can go, but you can make it longer and you actually can make it wider if you'd like to do that. You can also show more panels than we have showing here now. Just go to your Windows menu and choose the panels that you want to see. I like to have my colors panel out and I also like to have my history panel out. If you've not used that before, 
the history panel is what's recording your steps up to a certain number that we'll show you later on as you're working with your layers. So if you need to go back in time, you can actually click and go back to a specific layer. So I like to drag my history panel out and nest it here with my layers panel. There's a couple of other panels we could go into here, really not necessary. You might like the navigator panel that will show you uh, where you are on your document. If you're working over here and you're working in a zoomed in view but want to see at the same time an overview of your page, you'll see the entire thing here. But For now let's just close these panels group just here. Now I did want to show you that as I said you can move these anywhere you want to. If you like to have them all over the place you can certainly do that. If you'd like to drag them back to where they were and watch, I'll pull the effects panel out all the way. Now you see my workspace has expanded to fill up my screen since I'm working maximized. You can put it back by simply going all the way, dragging it from the dark bar at the top all the way over to the right. And then the screen will change when you've got it into position, you'll get this blue highlight bar. And when you see that, you can let go. And I can do the same thing. I can attach it over here on the left side or I could drag these back over here wherever I'd like. Now if you get all messed up and you can't figure out how to get your workspace back to the way it was, you can always come back and choose basic workspace down here and that will put us back to where we started with just the layers panel active uh, in the layer in the panel bin. I wanted to quickly show you how I like to arrange my workspace and maybe you'll like it and want to do something similar but it shows you a little bit more about the versatility of these panels. I'm going to come back down to more and go to customize workspace and as I said I like to work with my layers panel and the effects panel but I don't care for the favorites or the graphics panel so I'm going to close those. I'm going to take my effects panel and I'm going to resize it make it just a little bit longer grab this little bar here and drag down. You can see if I drag it as far as it can go I have no scroll bars here but if I don't want it quite that long I can make it a little bit shorter and then I'll get the scroll bar so even if it's shorter I still have access to all those uh, those effects there. I'm going to take the layers panel and I'm going to dock it underneath the effects panel. I'm going to drag it all the way up until I see the little light blue line and once I see that highlight I know we're attached and when I let go now we're docked. So I'll also resize my layers panel a little bit. I'm going to bring it all the way over here to the right side of the screen and continue dragging until I, yeah, probably dragging it right off the screen here until I see the light blue highlight and then once I see that I can let go and now my panels are docked. Now the next time I come into Elements, my workspace will be all set up for me. Join me in part two of this video and I'll show you a little bit about setting preferences in Elements. See you there!